Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today, we're uh, tackling a really significant global health issue, parasitic worm infections. A huge problem, yeah. We've got some, well, quite compelling research papers here, studies from Uganda and Ghana, mm -hmm. and they're looking at whether using combinations of anti-parasitic drugs might be, you know, a better way to treat whole communities. Communities dealing with schistosomiasis, soil transmitted helminths. Right, and lymphatic filariasis, onchocerciasis. It's a real alphabet soup of these conditions, unfortunately. It really is. So our goal, for you listening, is to unpack the complexities and hopefully the potential benefits of giving people multiple drugs at the same time. Okay. Let's do it. What's really striking, I think, is just the sheer scale we're talking about. Millions of people. Millions. Oh. Often suffering from more than one of these infections simultaneously, it leads to chronic illness, really impacts quality of life. Definitely. So these studies, they're exploring a very practical angle. Can we improve treatment on the ground? Absolutely. Let's, uh, let's start with the Uganda study. This one focused on children, really young ones, age one to four. A particularly vulnerable group, yeah. They were infected with Schistosoma mansoni and also these soil transmitted helminths. Researchers compared giving just praziquantel. Which is a standard treatment for schisto. Exactly. Compared that to giving praziquantel plus mebendazole. Right. And the finding there was, well, pretty encouraging. The combination therapy showed a significantly higher reduction in the parasite load. Higher than praziquantel on its own. Yes, in these young kids. And importantly, both options, the single drug and the combo, seemed well accepted. Minimal side effects reported. That's vital, isn't it? For community-wide programs, acceptance is key. It is. And mebendazole, just quickly, it works by basically staping the worms from absorbing nutrients starves them out. Okay, makes sense. So that's Uganda. Now, shifting gears a bit, let's look at Ghana. The situation there, described in this other paper, seems even more complex. It does. Rural northern Ghana, you've got schistosomiasis, onchocerciasis, that's river blindness, and lymphatic filariasis, all endemic in the same communities. Wow. So what did they do there? They went a step further. They administered praziquantel, ivermectin, and albenzol all at the same time. Three drugs at once. <laughs> That's targeting quite a range of different parasites. It absolutely is. And, you know, you have to think about the practicalities, the logistics. Instead of needing maybe separate treatment rounds for each disease. Exactly. Potentially just one single community-wide effort could tackle all three, or at least make a bigger dent. And did it work? Was it feasible? The study suggested yes, this kind of combined approach is feasible in a real-world resource-limited setting. Ivermectin, by the way, is particularly useful against certain stages of those filarial worms causing LF and river blindness. Okay, so looking across these different studies, what's the general takeaway about using these drug combinations? Why is this strategy gaining traction? Well, the fundamental idea is pretty straightforward. In places where people often have multiple types of worms... Which is common in many regions. Very common. Treating them all at once just makes logical sense, doesn't it? It could potentially improve overall health more effectively, reduce the disease burden more quickly. And the research suggests it can be done safely. Broadly, yes. The studies indicate these combinations can be administered safely, but uh, obviously ongoing monitoring for any adverse events is always crucial. You can't skip that. Of course. It the just sounds so much more efficient, potentially. Is it just that you're adding the effects of each drug? Or is there any hint that they might actually work better together, like a synergistic effect? Ah, that's a really key question. The potential for synergy. Right. Some findings maybe hint that the combined effect might be greater than just adding up the individual drug effects. But honestly, more specific research is really needed to confirm synergy. Okay. But even without proven synergy, the benefit of hitting multiple infections at once, increasing treatment coverage efficiently, that's a major plus in itself. And we saw different combinations used praziquantel and mebendazole in Uganda and praziquantel, ivermectin, albendazole in Ghana. So it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. Definitely not, no. The specific cocktail of drugs really needs to be tailored. It depends entirely on which specific diseases are most prevalent in that particular area. Makes sense. Uganda focused on gut worms and schisto. Correct. While Ghana added drugs effective against the filarial worms causing river blindness and LF, it really underscores how vital local disease surveillance is. You need to know what you're targeting. Okay. So wrapping this up a bit, the big picture seems to be that combining these anti-parasitic drugs holds, well, 
real promise. Yeah. Especially for treating multiple infections simultaneously in community-wide programs. It does offer potential benefits, yeah. Streamlining treatment, maybe improving outcomes. But, and it's a big but, we have to be really careful about evaluating safety and checking how effective these specific combinations are in different places with different groups of people. Precisely. It's a promising direction, especially for these heavily burdened regions. But, um... You need rigorous studies, good data on safety, on effectiveness across diverse populations before you roll this out widely. Yeah. It well, really makes you think, though, given how incredibly challenging healthcare delivery can be in so many of these endemic regions, mm -hmm. could these combination therapies actually be a turning point you know, for the long-term control, maybe even moving towards elimination of these really debilitating diseases? That's the hope, isn't it? And if so, what's the most critical research we still need to do to make that a reality? Definitely, uh, definitely something to ponder. Thanks for this deep dive.